This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with more than 13,000 classes taught by professionals in design, photography, and much more. You can learn many useful skills to advance your career or just have fun. Click the link in the description to get unlimited access to Skillshare for free for two months. If you like the service, then stay for around 10 bucks a month or cancel with absolutely no obligation. Click the link in the description to get started. What is happening everyone and welcome to my After Effects tutorial. In this video, I want to show you how to work with 3D and OBJ files in After Effects and Plexus. So what you're seeing right now is what we're going to talk about today. And this full title sequence was created using a lot of different 3D models. And I understand that not everyone watching this video is going to have access to those. So I'm going to be giving away one of my 3D models for free. The link is going to be in the description. Just download. And this way you guys can follow along and maybe create a few interesting shots to add into your demo reel. And maybe even show them to me. So uh, the best thing to take away from this video is uh, how to work with OBJ and 3D files, obviously. But... Uh, uh, also to understand that if you don't have a very powerful graphics card in your machine how to work with plexus and how to still get your work done and i'm going to be talking you know some of my workflow hacks that i you know uh, work with and I use when I'm working with my projects. So getting started, I have already created my new composition. I'm going to create a new solid. I'm going to call this plexus and I'm going to apply plexus to the solid. This should open up your Plexus object panel and uh, my advice would be to dock it somewhere into your workspace, right? This way you don't have it floating around the screen. Super. Uh, next, we need to import our OBJ file. Now, Plexus works a little bit different than Element 3D. So you don't have a scene set up where you go when you import. You import your OBJ into your uh, project panel. So I'm going to double click over here and I'm going to browse to the place where I have my OBJ set up. Uh, the rook file is going to be again in the description for free no uh, you know charges uh, sign up or anything download and enjoy and follow along so double click on the obj file that's going to be imported into your project panel and then just bring this down and what you will see is that there's going to be some kind of a sign saying that it's, it's to be used with trap code form don't worry about this it's nothing like that just switch off the eyeball for the obj and go to plexus and we will uh, go to add geometry and take obj so in the layer stack you should have the obj panel points and normal plexus so we'll go into the obj object and the very first setting the obj layer we'll change it to the rook.obj this way if you deselect now and you zoom into the uh, work uh, you know uh, into your scene you will see that there is a small you know dot sort of thing in the scene and this is again why i want to make this video that sometimes your 3d models either you purchase them or you're working with a big team sometimes they're not given to you right and these kind of things can happen so uh, one of the solutions that some of you may come up with is to create a new camera and then to zoom in but as you can see even when we are zooming in uh, you know it's still looking like a dot and we are not getting our proper rook object so what you can do is you can go to the plexus um, layer and I'm going to delete this camera for now so I'm going to go to the plexus layer and in the obj object there are a few settings over here that you can use to uh, you know scale up and to define your obj better so in the transform obj if you do all this down you're going to see obj scale and you can you know uh, for me for this object i'm going to have to take this to a very high number like 4000 but you will see that that works and it's not destroying the object or not pixelating it in any way that's just how it is and uh, if you were to rotate this now like this right we're gonna have our rook in the scene now one thing I would like to show you is that if you're not having a, again a, a very powerful graphics card Plexus works uh, and uses a lot of GPU power so if you're not having that or if you're having an older version what you can do is that if you want to work with the OBJ and if you have multiple OBJs in the scene you can go to the Plexus uh, object panel and there's gonna be the OBJ resolution and you can bring this down for you to work a little bit easier and what this basically does is that, is that it reduces the points on the object model and this way it makes it really easy for you to uh, you know move around in the scene and basically what it did was is that it reduced the um, the the quads of the model right so your model is not being destroyed you can always bring this back up to 100 once you are ready to do a final render but this way it helps you you know 
you know, work a little bit better. Uh, the dot feel, this dot look, I'm not a big fan of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back up to 100. And uh, the points renderer, I'm going to go into this. And the points are a little too big. So I'm going to change this from 2 to 0 0.5. And this way we're getting a very nice, uh, you know, uh, look. And I want to really focus on the on the top part of the castle. So this is where you know people would be, and uh, you know keeping an oversight of how things were. And uh, this looks good to me, right? Now uh, you can create your animation. So we can add a camera, uh, an orbit null, and we can hit the position on the null, move ahead in time, and uh, you know do something like this, right? So this way we have a nice animation from here to maybe to there and okay this looks nice now if you want to add more animation to the object itself you can again go into the plexus obj and you can animate these properties where you want to rotate the y so let me just do that really quick um, like this so this way the object is also moving right and uh, next thing that you can do is you can uh, you know do a lot of animation with the camera but I want to focus on the plexus so I'm gonna go to add renderer and you can add different effects on this so maybe if you want to join the dots with lines you can add that and again what you're gonna see is that you know the default settings are a little too thick and very heavy for the scene so I'm gonna go into the lines renderer in the stack here and it's gonna show me all the different settings and right here line thickness is what I'm interested in I'm gonna bring this down to point 0.1 so this way we're getting a much better, uh, you know, a triangulation wireframe effect. And uh, the, the the cool thing that you can do is you can add an effector now. And in this effector, you can use this to basically break the 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 OBJ with a lot of different noise uh, settings. But we'll keep this a little bit after this. So what I want, uh, so what I want to do is I want to for now, I want to reduce the line thickness even more like this right and uh, you can always switch it off from here so right here in the FX panel so as you can see since we have added the line you know th the scene is getting a little heavy for me and uh, and I'm not getting a live update anymore la la, you know the scene is lagging a little bit so I can reduce or actually remove the lines renderer and this way you can see things are a lot easier for me so once you know I'm ready for a final render I can bring the lines back on and do a render like this but for my animation previews and for my workflow I'm gonna keep this off right uh, next for this title sequence what I did was I had my main object model and then I basically duplicated it right and I increased its size a little bit so I went in the transform object and I increased the OBJ skies and you can also bring it down so this way it matches the 3d alignment and the 3d space right like this and then I added the noise effector on it now what noise is gonna do is that it's gonna destroy the uh, the model but it's gonna look really nice with the lines. so right now the lines uh, effect is switched off on my second plexus I'm gonna call this um, elements right so this is my main model a main model is right here this is my elements and again the lines are still here on this so if I switch this back on you will see they're getting something like this and uh, if I was to put this both in the scene you will see that my main model is really getting obscured and we cannot see it properly and uh, what I can do is I, is, is I can go to the OBJ object and I'm going to reduce the OBJ resolutions this way we have a fewer uh, you know quads and points to work with and it connects a lot less and we have something like this right so very cool elements we can really see that the elements are looking nice and uh, the model also looks good and we have the same animation on it right so this looks really nice to me cool uh, the way we can add some animation in the noise and with the elements plexus is that we can go to the noise effector and we can uh, open up noise amplitude oh sorry noise details and you can uh, add a time expression on the noise evolution so time into say 5 and what this is going to do is that when you move it you can see that there is 
wait a sec. This is going to be a slight animation. Maybe 5 is a little too small value. Let me add 10. Now you can see that when I took the value up to 100, you can now already see the, the, the movement and noise. So if we play this now, it would look something like that, right? So it looks good like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, next, what we can do is we can. Uh, so for this title sequence, my whole aim was to create a very big network of chess, right? So we had to have the main model, the elements, and then I created one more plexus for the background. So what I did was uh, I duplicated the elements and I renamed it to BG and I put it down, right? So it's going to be serving as my background. And then I increased the scale of it. So I increased the OBJ scale. So I was basically, you know, taking a shortcut. I didn't want to model uh, another plexus in the space. So this thing is already in our space. You can actually just increase the object model like this, and you can bring it. You can, you can you, you'll have to set it right with the entire scene like this, and you can reduce the object resolution really really low. So it's going to look something like that, right? Maybe even three. And this way you have the entire thing moving with the main model, right? And you can set this up with a good text. And let's not forget uh, the depth of field, right? So we can go into our main model now. Plexus, oh sorry, the BG first, Plexus. And in order to switch on depth of field for this scene, you'll have to do a few steps. So we'll have to go into the Plexus BG, go into the bottom Plexus, and you can put a tech mark on the required DOF. And it's going to make this whole thing a little choppy, but that's because now it is rendering on different qualities. There's 1x, there's 8x, right? So, you know, when we are doing a final render, we do it, you know, we keep this to 8x, but when you're working, we always work with 1x. And depth of field, you can see right now it's switched off. You'll have to come to camera settings. And uh, you'll, you'll also have to switch on depth of field in the camera. So if the camera depth of field is switched off, the scene is not going to update. Right, so if we switch this back on, you will see the background goes away, and this is because the focus distance is not set up right. So we'll have to make changes to that. And I never really understand how focus distance really works, but the one thing that I did is that I have to make a lot of changes to it, right? So I am a pro and I don't understand. So if you're not getting it, it's okay, guys. Nobody gets it. Uh, aperture, I'm going to take it this up to 25. So we are having this. And then you'll have to switch on depth of field for all the three layers. So the main model also, you'll go to plexus, required for DOF, you'll have to ch uh, put a check mark on this, DOF camera settings, and there you go. But now you can see that the main model is blurred. And what you can do is you can also animate the focus distance and the aperture. So maybe we'll just do it. So at the start, I want this to be blurred. This looks good. And when we move ahead in time, I want this to be in focus. Right, so let me see. And this is just a little bit of perfection right there. Right, so at the start, it's gonna be blurry. And then let's just switch on the DOF for the element as well. So we'll go to Plexus, required for DOF and depth of field to camera settings. So we have the full thing to be blurred. And then at the end, it's gonna be in focus. So let's just see how this looks really quick. So this is our animation. We have some uh, noise animation on the elements. We have some noise animation on the, on the background plexus. We have our main model, which is coming in focus. So it's blurred right now comes in focus and if you were to work on this model and this animation a little bit better I'm sure you guys can create uh, a good title sequence like this right uh, in order to color this full thing now you can uh, create an adjustment layer and apply tint on it right so it's gonna color the entire thing in one color which works by the way so we'll just go to tint we applied the tint to the adjustment layer I'm gonna go to map white too and I'm gonna change it to a nice blue shade like this and this works but if you want more control what you can do is you can create a new composition I'm gonna make it the same size as my output composition so the tutorial oh sorry I'll have to make it small uh, 960 by 540 so my tutorial composition I'm gonna call this color map right 
and over here basically we can create a, a four color gradient so I'm gonna call this color and I'm gonna apply a, a, a gradient effect called four color gradient and this way what's gonna happen is is that we are gonna use these four colors to map on the entire model and this way we're gonna get a little bit more control on the different colors uh, so for example I'm, I'm gonna keep this ridiculous color just so you guys can see it so I'm gonna come to tutorial uh, take my color map bring it down over here and in the plexus main model I'm gonna go apply add a vector uh, color map and in the color map I'm gonna go and uh, so I have to select the color map in the layer stack and I'm going to apply the color map over here setting it says none I'm going to change it to the color map composition and this way you can see that the colors from this gradient are being applied to the model right and as you can see the color yellow and green are really uh, you know being used on this uh, on on this model so my uh, workflow is to change everything to red or uh, to black or to white or something like that like this or actually i'm going to make everything white white would work better like this right and then i change just to one color so i can understand that if it's being mapped or where is it being mapped to so as you can see blue is playing an important role over here so i'm going to change the blue and i'm going to go for the color three now and let's see if this is playing an important role so as you can see color three is not being used in the scene that much so this i'm going to keep this to white i'm going to go to color four now apply this to red and see if this is being applied nope color four is also not being applied let me just uh, see if color 1 is being, yep, color 1 and color uh, color 2 are being used a lot. So I'm going to change those two now. Like this, right? And uh, I'm going to apply the same color map to uh, the plexus elements as well. So add a vector, color map. In the color map, I'm going to apply the color map like this, right? And plexus BG. Um, Add uh, add a vector, color map, color map, and over here, choose color map. So uh, you know you 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 got a lot more control like this. So if you feel that okay, the color one, uh, you know maybe I'll have to put a little bit of uh, green neon in it, and see how it looks. So you you got a lot more control working this way. And uh, when I'm rendering this, I'm going to uh, you know make everything 8x. So let me just show that to you really quick. Um, and you know, just for the just for the tutorial, I'm going to re uh, remove the color map because it's going to take a little more time to render with the color. So uh, if you are ready to render this or ready to render your work, you'll have to change everything to 8x. Uh, basically, if you go in main model, plexus, come down and uh, you know go over here, make it 8x. Things are going to get very very heavy very quickly. So uh, when we are working, we always keep things the render quality to 1x but for the final render 8x is the right way to go and you will really see the difference here in the in the background so right now as you can see it's a very bloody very choppy but when I change the BG plexus to um, to 8x you will really see how good it gets and you know all the choppiness is removed so this is uh, 1x and then this is 8x right much much better so you get a nice clean scene like this and uh, the rendering is going to be very very long uh, so I'm going to actually change everything back to 1x because I don't want to render like that and um, so this is what we have made in a very short amount of time but uh, these were all my techniques that I used for creating my title sequence uh, this project by the way awesome people if anyone is interested or if you cannot work with this and you know you don't want to take the time to create something like this but you still want to use uh, this title sequence this title sequence is on uh, video hive so you can get this over here uh, it would uh, support my channel quite a lot if you are heading to uh, this uh, this this web page and you know getting the title sequence from there and uh, if you you know are going to purchase it I'm gonna be very very grateful awesome people so thank you for supporting my channel like that and I hope you have a good time watching this video this template comes with a lot of different bonus content as well so this can be used in your documentaries um, you know uh, YouTube videos concept videos all that good stuff and uh, thank you for watching this video I am very happy
and uh, you know for making this video so I hope you guys enjoyed and please subscribe like and share it would help me out you know and help the channel out a lot thank you so much I will see you all next time